Well, no, she not just speak for me. <laughs> do their thing. We don't have to do our thing this time. Right. Okay. Uh, with that, with that change, uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Anyone in favor? No. Second. Second. Uh, the motion is being uh, seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion carried in the end of the summer. Um, we don't have anything here from the public. Away from the public. Stick that. Communications. Can we start with Keith? All right. Yeah, we know it. I hate to say it, but we didn't quite get there last month. We were trying to. Uh, Trying to get 200,000 and keep that streak of uh, what, one, two, five months alive. And we didn't make it. We got 186,000, which, uh, you know, we were projected at 98. So we pushed that number and made it feel really good. And it's 36,000 over what we did at the uh, prior year. So that's just super. Um, round wise, you kind of stay the same. Uh, like 200 here short, but I will confess to the board. <laughs> That I figured something out in the last in the last week. Um, with our new point of sale system, we had to train all of our employees, right? I thought I had everybody trained perfectly. So when you when you do a prepaid round, okay, so the, the prepaid round, you book it online, it's prepaid, we get the money. I ring that that money in the next morning. And then when the when the customers come, we check them into the T sheet. Okay. You can so when you check someone in, you can put a you can click on the check mark and that gives them a blue check mark and it looks like they're checked in. But you need to go one step further and click on the shopping cart and take them through the shopping cart, even though it's a zero transaction. You got to take them through the shopping cart. And then once it's through the shopping cart and you close the order, then it counts as an official round. Everybody follow that? Yeah. Almost all of my staff followed that perfectly. Almost. So. <laughs> 2,938 rounds that I spent the last week ringing in as I went through every day's T sheet oh. to, to find all those rounds that weren't counted. Now there's zero rounds, we got the money, so it's not about that. But I couldn't figure out why, why our rounds were so low and, and that was it. So now all of a sudden, as we near the end of October, I'm back up over 37,000 rounds now. So as you can see, if you look at the actual <clears> rounds, 31,005, well, boy, I had a good October, didn't I? Well, that's why. So I'll try to get Danny, um, if she can, in her spreadsheet to spread those out over the summer months so it looks a little bit more realistic. But uh, anyway, we're doing, doing a little better on rounds now than we were. Um, but what a great year. And, and uh, this month we're doing real good, too. We uh, I think we just went over 100,000 for, uh, for October as of today. Hopefully, we'll, you know, get a few more, three or four more good days in and maybe get to that that 113 that we got to last year. That would be great. And uh, although it looks like the weekend is going to let us down starting on Friday, but we were due to get some weather. But it's been a great year. I can't say enough. I don't get to see the board again this year. I can't say enough about the golf course this year and about the job Ryan and his crew do with a 46-year-old irrigation system. My math is correct. It's See. Okay. Um, I think about it a lot. So anyway, with an irrigation system that old to have a golf course in the condition that we had it in all year, thanks to Ryan and his guys, just can't say enough. We had our invitational here on the 14th and 15th of March. The sheer volume of amazing feedback from out of town golfers was mm -hmm. off the charts. So it was great. Huh? The October one. Yeah, the March one we, of course, is a little rough in March, but the October got great from there. So, can't say enough. Any questions at all for Twin Peaks? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of in the same boat there with the uh, way Keith has been saying it. Um, Projected for sunset revenue wise uh, for September was 52,720. Actual came in at 68,351. Rounds 
projected at 3626, uh, actual was 4300. And unfortunately for the weather this weekend, the slopes down, but yeah, it's been, it's just still been super busy. Saturday, nonstop, all open to close. Sunday, I'm sure it was the same way. They even still the same. Um, he said it all. The golf courses are fantastic. Absolutely. Brian and Dan also I'll say that because I've been out to you a couple of times to get some lessons. Courses are just, just perfect. <laughs> so I'm short and sweet. Anyone got questions for Sunset? <clears throat> uh, I have one comment. I uh, played Sunset Monday, Friday, Friday, Friday. with uh, two other adult uh, seniors and a senior woman. So, of course, I had to start asking about the course launch and stuff. And so, finally, at the end, I said, okay, on a scale of one to ten, how do you rate everything? Because the, the, the lady sells booze was out there, and, and, uh, and he said, or they said, well, how about a nine? So I said, well, on a scale of nine to one to ten, that's pretty good. I said, but what? why not ten? And they said, well, you know that tree on six? <laughs> They said, up on the left hand side, it's got a great branch that comes out. We just need to take that off. So, that is, that is the number one complaint for well, players well, in I'm all saying. age brackets because that branch just sits there right on the corner and just wants you. Right. If that, but it, it, I will tell you this though you get rid of that branch, it, it will significantly make that hole a lot easier. Oh. And then once that tree officially, like eventually goes, oh, that yeah. hole will no longer be oh. a tough hole. Right. <laughs> because that, that tree is the target line for a lot of players. For sure. But I know I know the feeling though. Okay. All too well. <laughs> I believe on Thursday I smoked that tree. Anything else for sunset? <laughs> no. Uh, Hugh Creek? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, more of the same. It's um been a great year, been a great September as well. Turning out to be great October, the weather's been amazing, and the round certainly show it. Um, revenues for September two hundred forty nine thousand, um, puts us year to date through September one million eight hundred eighty seven, and um, for the month twenty four thousand in the year almost two hundred thousand ahead, the prior year, which is great. Um, then the rounds, which I think we're reading them in right Well, if you need a lesson, if you, if you need a lesson, just let me know. I'll come over and I'll tell you what, it's like reading code now. I can pull up a sheet and I'll, I'll give you my password. You just go right after it. <laughs> By our rounds, we're at um, 36,916 through um, September, which is 551. I had a prior year. I think that number's correct, but I'm kind of looking <laughs> out and maybe just go back and make sure our staff is getting it done correctly. I'm pretty sure they are. There's, I guess it's worth a check when I have time. Um, I ran the numbers for October and um, month to date we're at 145,000, which for Youth Creek, we got, I've reached a milestone. We're over 2 million now um, through October. Month to date. So it's a uh, great year. Of course, it's in awful shape considering it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> These guys don't make too much. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course, it's been, uh, been great this year. Yeah, and it's pretty, um, I don't mind as well. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Very, very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, three pros. You do a fantastic job. Okay, next is uh, old business and uh, update on the bond. Okay. Ryan, you want to start? Yeah, I can start. So I'll start with giving an update on the irrigation bond project. So <laughs> we're getting closer and closer to the project physically starting. <clears throat> we have a pre-construction meeting scheduled this Thursday morning. 
with ACC who's doing the work. We're going to get a lot of information on when they're going to start or know for sure when they're going to start bringing in equipment and parts. Um, so a lot of information this Thursday I'll know a lot more about, but right now I've heard that they feel parts are going to start showing up next week for Twin Peaks. And um, also I've been told they're thinking of starting in Sunset come the week next week also with the replacing the irrigation heads because we have a small box or not box, small stash of sprinkler heads from when the project was originally started. So we're thinking of starting that project and then um, hopefully have sunset wrapped up on third before Thanksgiving. But I haven't that, heard of that part of sunset. Yes, it's still oh, part of yeah. So that would just leave the remainder part of sunset of the pump station being reworked with pumps and motors. But I haven't heard any confirmation that um, they're going to do that for sure. It all depends on whether the one crew is up in Taco Mountain, the other one's up there in Ferguson. So it all depends on what the weather does up in the mountains when we come down here. So beyond that, everything is moving towards the direction of what's going to get started soon. We'll know a whole lot more on Thursday morning when they're here to share the data with us. So if everyone has any other questions, about that project? <laughs> no questions? <laughs> uh, the next thing is direction. I can talk about the creek maintenance facility real quick to you. It's part of the old business. Um, so we got moved out of our facility off of Highway 66 on September 12th through the 14th. We Got all of our stuff out of the house, all of it out of the garage, both garages, and we're moved up to the middle area by the clubhouse mm -hmm. where we kind of originally decided or wanted to go and then got shut down. So we got a temporary trailer up there. We got a big area of uh, fenced in so we can have all our equipment in it and a couple of mini mobiles to store all of our tools. And um, our mechanic has a little work area in there, which he also works out at Sandstone Ranch. <clears throat> so we can have a concrete floor and lift and all that. But uh, so yeah, we got moved out, got going. The construction company got all their stuff moved in there. And then came the asbestos abatement and we hit a hit a big snag again. So we're waiting on the asbestos people to get their permit or their license with the state expired right before they were supposed to start our project. So, so we've wasted about a eh, few weeks of perfect weather um, and and then uh yeah the construction guys are sitting down there we're sitting the whole place is empty and nothing's happening so it's uh kind of the way it's been going but uh hopefully we can get somebody else in there or they will have their license by they hope to have had it friday but i don't think it's happening so we're probably gonna get somebody else in there and try to get rolling so so yeah because it'll take a good two to three weeks to get all the asbestos stuff out and then they can flatten every well then the fire department wants to come in and do some training in the house and all that and then they can flatten it and dig it and start digging footers and <laughs> all that so so yeah it's kind of the way it's working but it'll get there any other old business okay we'll go on to the new business saying we're going to be which is discussed 2024 passes the business shit i mean i'm going to turn that over to jeff yep so in your packet, you should have information uh, for the three courses, what it costs for our current rates in 2023 and what, what, uh, what the new rates would be if we raised anywhere between five, eight or 10 percent. Also in your packet, Danny had done a really nice job of calling other golf courses to kind of get a comparison of what they have available for their passes and memberships. And one of the things that you really see in that information is nobody does things the same way. So it's virtually impossible to compare apples to apples on any any of the, the different products or opportunities that we uh, provide. So we as a staff would like to 
uh, proposed to the board that we look at uh, 8% increase for passes and uh, memberships in 23. We went back and, and looked and we believe that the passes and memberships have not been increased since 2018. Ooh. And so um, it's, it's really time that we do that. The price increase should probably be more than the 8%, but we feel like that is a fair amount to uh, raise things at this point in time, and that we would uh, bring uh, rates back for you for 2025 and have this same conversation with you um, next year. So does anybody have any questions or comments or Back, back in 2018, how high did you raise the rates? What was the change? It, I don't remember the percentage, but it was it was, it was not even close to, I would say it was close to 3 to 4 percent. And did you see any sort of decline in, in the ground? <clears throat> like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, but, but the past, they've not, I'm sorry, they've, they've not kept up with our increase in green fees. Right. On okay. percentage wise. Yeah. So, Eight percent is actually very conservative. Oh, actually, no. I'm right on board with eight percent. Yeah, I'm yeah. Curious about yeah. It. The, the other thing that I should probably mention is that if we, um, I, I met with John last week and he uh, made a suggestion of what uh, what's the number of passes that that we currently uh, have for 2023. That number is around 900, with a total revenue amount of just over $400,000. So although this is a, a very important component because the amount of money that we bring in is not, it doesn't really show how many rounds because I think the folks that uh, take advantage of passes and memberships are really playing their parts out. and. And so, uh, again, $400,000 is not you know, a lot of money, but there are a lot of people that are, uh, don't have those that, again, are playing a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. You <clears throat> probably stay $100 hmm. for, for a year. Yeah. For the, <laughs> I can see it when it was, I don't know, 140, 45, whatever. Right. But I, this, I'm curious to myself, uh -huh. you know, and so, so that's a hundred dollars here or there. Yeah. But but thanks for doing the pass over. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can drop that. It's not, we are not <laughs> no, I, 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 and that's really it's really there for those folks that want to play a lot of golf and and I think they are. And, you know it, it it's a good product. It I, I think it's a, a fair product for uh, those people that are really committed to Longmont Golf, and but I but I do think the eight percent is a, a fair increase. Uh, any discussions from the board further about that from the board members? If not, then we have to make a motion to raise the passes eight percent for twenty twenty four. So, so one one question I have is from reading the other places as well that David put up, was there any thought of doing a range punch card, which I saw on some of the ones? We do, I know we do, do you do that here? Yes, we do that both here and at Ukraine. And uh, just wasn't sure if we did that or not. So yeah, and there is 10, 10 punch and 30 punch. Right. And then those will be going up too. But as range rates go up, uh, we'll start give in those yeah, okay, I just did see that on the range pass. You mm -hmm. see that on here, and so I was sure. Hey, it's, when we talk about this pass, we're talking about all the passes, right? The junior, and then all the men, all across, the, across the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Well, then we can have a motion to raise passes 8%. Oh, damn, 4% Do I have a second? So, <clears throat> motions, here's a Made to raise the yes. eight percent for twenty twenty four. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries unanimously. 
Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Jeff? I I would. This is more of an item from staff, but would like to if if we take a few minutes this evening to kind of follow up what we talked about at the last time that that we met and trying to make sure that staff is bringing things to you as the board that you feel provide value and make it worth your time to be on the advisory board. Um, I think that, uh, you know, what came out of last time's meeting that passes and memberships was a part of that, but what other things can we bring to you that you would like to, to see in the months to come? It's going to be valuable to me, Jeff, but just today is my anniversary of the time here. So, yeah, are you trying to do something in the next year? That's brilliant. I don't want to one up that, but I spent my 75th birthday in a city council meeting. That's how I celebrated last Tuesday night or the week before Tuesday. So, so. Well, happy happy, 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 I don't know that I can speak for council. I can speak for me. Sure. Right. And I and I've been sitting here, you know, weighing. Sh should I say what I'm about to say? But since asked, <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> um, I sit on, you know, as you in the role of council, you get assigned to serve as liaison, right, to boards and commissions. And um, there's a learning curve that goes with that, mm -hmm. right, in terms of what what do you what would I bring to any of these. And what should I take back to council? So part of the role is just keeping council members informed. So that's part of my job. What I've always wished, or honestly, that the boards and commissions that I that I've liaised on to um, would have higher expectations for for the op not not that these guys aren't doing a great job, but for how that's how it's supported by the city, not just the golf board. The library and, the, and what the library board does, the museum and what the museum board does. Um, and one of the, what I was weighing about whether or not I should say this, one of my objectives, maybe it wasn't an objective, one of my aspirations when I ran for council was to see that New Creek got finished. Right? I mean, I, I just had this conversation with Sam, you know, when I was volunteering at New Creek and running for city council. Um, uh, so I don't know if I owe anybody an apology, but I was in, unsuccessful in making much progress. I think, other than a, we have a design that was funded at four hundred and some odd thousand dollars a couple of years ago, and we haven't spent about sixty of that. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Uh, so there's is any of that left in an account? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Because um, at the time, uh, well, I, I'll just I'll leave it at this. When we built this year's budget, oh, by the way, every year I've recommended to the city manager, and I'm not being critical of the process. I understand the process works and health and safety issues and, you know, all of the competing priorities that go into building the city's budget. But this year in particular, um, kind of the mantra for building the budget was, let's not introduce new things until we finish things that we have started. And I've said, you know, I'm on the record public, gee, you know, the one project that started in 1995 and is yet to be finished is the U Creek Clubhouse, right? So whether or not you all support, you know, moving forward that or not, I do think that in addition to advising staff, there are times where if you have expectations for the, for the operation for the city, you ought to be out front on those, right? When the bond question, when this group was asked, whether or not you'd support the 2018? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bond question. Um, my recommend, I was liaison here, and my recommendation was you say yes to that with a qualification. We would support that, and 
we'd like to see you finish the Ute Creek Golf Course. So these guys are, aren't in a position to advocate. They're going to get asked about budget priorities. And you're not, your role isn't as advocates, you're as advisors. But every once in a while, if there's a, if there's a gap between reality and aspiration, I don't, I don't think you should be bashful about saying, why would we not see more progress on this? And I understand across the city, I, I've heard it from people to say, well, you're, my priorities are screwed up because I give voice to, you know, we ought to finish that project. You know, my response to it is, I think in 1995, the city said, we're going to do this. And there's something about keeping your word. And 30 years later, now 20 years later, maybe it's time to do that. Not just on that project, on other projects in the city and some of the parks and greenways and the kinds of things that are left undone. So I would love from time to time to hear from advisory boards express what your expectations are for the city and for the kinds of attention and the kinds of resources that, in this case, um, our golf courses deserve. Um, I've raised, and we went through the budget process, just saying, so you know, um, I was told this time that probably that's not going to happen until we find a restaurant that's willing to do a public-private partnership. And I said, yes. I asked that six years ago. Would you be interested in a public-private partnership? I'll go out and find somebody, you know, and then that, that was part of the conversation with Sam, because I didn't want to squeeze him out of one of his revenue streams, ways to put that together that would work for Sam, work for Ute Creek, work for the community. But on the east side of town, I don't think that's an extravagance. I think that is keeping good faith with what we said we were going to do in the in the development of a golf course around which a bunch of housing was permitted with the expectation that the golf course would be where the clubhouse would be finished. So I, thanks for the question. Didn't know what, what, what I might do with that, but I, I don't think you ought to be reticent uh, to express your expectations. And, and don't lay on these guys. Put it together, a board chair shows up to a public invited beer and, and shares what their perspectives are. Other boards and commissions have done that. You see items, whether you agree with what's on the ballot right now in terms of uh, the three ballot questions, the municipal ballot questions, every one of them is there. Partly because an advisory board said, we ought to, there's a standard we ought to be meeting and we're not meeting in terms of how we resource for library, what we need in terms of the recreation package. Parks and Rec Advisory Board was very soon, and not, I'd like to think I helped with that at some point. We haven't had that conversation here, but I, don't, I, I hope you keep that top of mind going forward. And this will be my last opportunity to do that speech if I am. Right? So I appreciate it. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks. You're well, Thank you for your service. Thank you. So hopefully I didn't get you in trouble. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so I've tried to get him in trouble more than once. I just, and I'm running out of time. Here. So what was passed in 1995? In 1995 is when the Ute Creek Golf Course was approved. Right. So council, but there, I don't believe there was a vote for that. I believe that it was based on Revenue bonds to pay it back. Well, those were the days where that's pre taper. Yeah. You, know, you didn't have to have a vote to right. do a revenue bond. Yes. Yes. But if you were to, so here's just, just your fat toy, all right, to keep it back in mind. Uh, in 1995, I don't know who, I, I think it probably was the museum that took the lead on creating a time capsule for Longmont. And um, anything, that, anything that anybody thought was worthy of recognizing 25 years later, Let's put that in a time capsule. So there are a number of things, art, artifacts that went into the time capsule. 25 years later, that time capsule was open. And one of the artifacts that somebody thought was so important to put in there was the whole was the brochure on New Creek. What, what had been approved, what the public could expect, right? It was a high enough priority, it was a big enough aspiration, people were excited enough about it to make it one of the most important documents to take a look at 25 years later. I happened to be there. I'd already been in this conversation with Jeff and Harold and others, about, and Sam, about, about finishing the work. And, the time, and I didn't know this was in there. Time capsule capsule opens up. And one of the things, one of the documents that was pulled out was the information brochure on the Ute Creek Golf Course. 
and what an addition is going to be to the community and what the what the clubhouse and the golf course was all going to mean to you know to the community. And um, I thought, you know what? Twenty five years later, that was two years ago, right? Twenty five years later, we hadn't finished the project that was important enough to remember in the, the town council. Three years later, we we're in the same place, other than we have a we have a design. So um, I, I might I might still be still trying to beat that drum as a as a as a resident on the east side of town. But if, if I haven't made much progress as a council member, I'm probably going to make much progress as a as a golfer and as an advocate for it. So I you know that's one of the regrets, maybe that we didn't get that done. But it was uh, it was exciting to think about it. And um, <laughs> it really wait, I appreciate all your efforts. Yeah, fun for a lot. Uh, I mean, it, it, but you got the ball rolling. You know, yeah. Where you have a design, and maybe once we complete all those other projects, maybe that's something that might happen for us. So as a board, here, listen to that. The ball, the ball, the ball rolled a little bit, right? Half the roll. <laughs> the only way it's going to keep rolling is if you all take an interest in this, okay? But otherwise, it, 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 it was so far out of sight and out of mind. Now it's it's back online. Yeah. <clears throat> so one last thing, John. So if you if everybody could be just thinking about things that would help provide more value, things you would like to hear, and then at some point in time talking about the number of meetings we had gone to uh, every other month for a period of time. Um, we aren't scheduled to meet in November, December. If you want to do that, we certainly can can meet uh, more often. But that's that's up to you all on whether you want to do that, or we can wait till January, have the conversation then, and decide how often we want to meet uh, moving forward. I think it's usually one of the agenda items in the first meeting in January, probably. Yeah. Yeah. We just have a meeting sort of, we just have to discuss it. Okay. Right. Anything else from the staff? Thank you. And thank you, sir. Uh, That's been my plan. Items from the board. Board? Not from me. Well, in that case, Yes. Well, I was going to say, I would like to know, you know, because I know we saw the designs and stuff like that. I think of all the things that a nice facility would bring to the community besides golf. <laughs> I mean, you know, weddings and conferences and all the things that happen with our beautiful backdrop. I would like to know how we could put more pressure or at least keep it in focus. And one of the things that Kip and I uh, talked about in that meeting last week, and I brought up too, was exactly what Amos was saying. And I said, if we keep like this room, it could be used more for something other than wrong. And we started talking about it. It looked like it wasn't a really feasible thing to be able to do because of all the other stuff going on, et cetera. Well, as an example, today I had to, I had to kick people out of here today for this meeting. So, you know, if we had another room that, that, was, that was bigger, or if that was built out there and that was partioned off and we had a way to, to do that where we could get more seating, but <coughs> it's, you know, it's a small room. We had a wedding, a couple weddings here that, it, you know, if you have a wedding that has more than 55 people involved, you can get 55 people on here very comfortably. It's a nice, really nice thing. So for small things, we do quite a few of those. But overall, you know, it's, it's just not big enough. So as you talk about design that you think that that design, I'm sitting here going, well, that'll be nice. As, I, as, I'm, as I'm listening right. to the description of how that, that's going to turn out. But this place, more often than not, I'm telling people, you know, I'll, I'll get calls to, to rent it on a fair amount. But the priority has to be the golfers. Because if the golfers come up mm -hmm. to the golf course and they want to come in and they want to they want to gather and have a drink and have something to eat. They need to be able to do that. And if this is always locked up for all the different events, that's not fair to the golfers. So I've always made it the priority is, is, is the golfers first. Now in the winter time, we definitely welcome more events, but unfortunately, very few folks get married in the winter. And the design of the clubhouse has taken that into 
account so that we would have a place for golfers as well as uh, event people. It was it was pretty neat last year. I was I was away on vacation. I got a call from some wedding event planner, and their their venue blew up on. Them. And I literally worked with this lady, and we planned a wedding while I was on vacation, and they did it while I was away, and it went off perfectly. It was unbelievable. But again, it was a small one, and it was in early December. A lot of things happen here when you're in. <laughs> no kidding. That one, he was in the occupation uh, when the fire happened as well. I remember calling him in Hawaii then. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? So, one more word. If that, if that, if that conversation stays alive for the next year. The way other boards uh, have expressed their interests or concerns to council is through a resolution, right? And it is something that staff could help with, right? That whoever is your liaison could help get on an agenda, not just public invite that you heard, but a resolution from the golf advisory board. Whereas, 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 whereas we made these promises, whereas we were, we do not have, especially on the east side of town, but I would I would say, you know, you ought to think about all the facilities, just as we were just hearing about, you know, the the, uh, the possibility of use of security. I know the next time I'm going to be here, it'll be with a bunch of golfers, but, but not for a meeting like this. Right? That's going to be with payoff on our fantasy golf list. It's going to be a lot of beer pizza. And I'll be a Janus. <laughs> we got a date yeah. set yet for that? Yeah. Yeah. So, and you can say license a yeah. week before the being over. So think about maybe putting your temper file, move to self, when you come back in January, when would be the appropriate time? I can tell you what would be between January 1st and April 1st, because the first budget discussion is going to be first Tuesday of March, or two, first Tuesday of May. <clears throat> He's going to be asked for his budget recommendations during the months of March and April. You know, if, you know, if that's something you're interested in, by resolution, at least you can express yourself and let people know you'll be paid real close to country. <clears throat> Budget right. presentations are made, and here are the questions you'd like to look at and get paid to them. Those are made. Anything else from the board? Just a quick one. How did Thursday get this crew? Well, they was in front of you, Keith, but people in front of you were really slow. So, oh, it was great. Was it, was it good? Oh, yeah. It's not great. And, and slow was wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you get, when you get, you know, I don't get to spend a lot of time with these guys, and two of the guys I, are my old sunset buddies that you know? I, no, Ryan, I spent a ton of time that would never actually play golf again. So to spend, as far as I'm concerned, it could have been four hours out of him. So the speed well, of play could help. The speed of play, the speed of play was perfectly slow. <laughs> perfectly slow. And it was wonderful. It wasn't bad, but you know, everybody had a good time. Everybody had a great time. So we we had a luncheon and golf on Thursday for all the maintenance staff to oh. celebrate. Uh, a good year and uh thank them for all the work that they did good. somehow yeah. keith got in there I'm not sure. Sure. Okay. But no, I, also keith and sam and ryan really don't get recognized enough for all the work that they do with the golf courses and none of it happened without them so uh, thank you to them as well so this made no city council members were not invited to be <laughs> Cool, thanks. Anything else from the board? Well, I'd like to say two things. One, this year has been an honor for me to be the chairman. I've certainly enjoyed it, and I've learned over the last couple of years so much about golf that I didn't know. That's for sure. So I want to thank all of you very much. And uh, anything else? And is there a motion to adjourn our last meeting for 2023? Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion was been raised and second to adjourn our meeting. All day we say aye. Aye. All opposed. Merry Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry <laughs> 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 Festivus. <laughs>